Alessandro Sartori, the creative head of Xenia, one of the world's top designers. Thank you, Simon. It's great, a pleasure. Well, great to have you with us today. Same. Unexpected pleasure. You're a busy man, so tell us in your own words, what does this design of 60 years ago say to you as a modern designer? First of all, I'm impressed because since day one I saw this car and this particular one, I was touched about the style and the feeling I had. And normally, cars that are speaking like this to me are younger, still old, but younger, like 50 years ago, 40 years ago are the period that I look at the most. This one though, first of all, made by a fantastic man, and uh, uh, all what he did and all what Zagado did was into this kind of dimension where there is always something a little weird a sort of unique approach where there is a line like this, like that, like here behind, where you expect the detail to follow a different line and suddenly go somewhere else. It surprises you? Very much. And I'm sure this car would be very difficult to exist today because we follow very much, sometimes too much, marketing rules about the perfect line, the perfect length, the perfect size, the perfect color. At that time, it was different. They were thinking to create the best car according to their own feeling and style. And Zagado did cars that I'm sure, and this is one of those, that the day one the car went out was not super well received. But a month, a year, two years, 60 years after, you look at this and you say, wow, he was a genius. And this is a car designed by a genius. It stood the test of time and it's aged well. Very much. In your mind's eye, and you and I are both too young to have been around when this car was designed, but cast your mind back to that, and I know you have a great appreciation of, of the history of design. What sort of person do you see driving that car then and today? You know, out of cars, I'm crazy about photography. I love a young Kubrick, which was not a director, was a photographer, as an example of Irving Penn. There is a book of him, and this car could be there, entitled uh, Small Shades, and is all about greys and colours around greys. This car to me uh, speaks like that. Uh, it belongs to a man without a specific age. And uh, 60 years ago, if we look back at those beautiful photos, there were men that they were probably 20 but looking 60s, or 60s looking 40s, you didn't know. And the reason why is because the style was so much unique and so much specific to them, not to the fashion of the time. So double-breasted suits, bottom-up shirts without any tie, big coats, nice loafer, beautiful English shoes, nice flannel suits, nice linen suits in summer and so on. I see a man wearing something which is timeless as the car style is. It's a sort of a Dolce Vita style, and it's not that dissimilar, I suppose, to the most famous Flaminia Zagato owner of all, Marcello Mastroianni, who Mamma epitomized mia. Mamma mia. Dolce Vita, didn't Mamma he? Mamma mia, I like his approach because he was unique. You know, we were talking before about yes. uh, the dinner I had with Chiara, uh, his daughter, and she said to me, Papa was wearing something so special, and I didn't understand what he was wearing and doing when I was young, like six, seven, eight, but I did understand what he was wearing, doing and driving when I was 14, 16. It was super, also because it was very stylish, but his style was unique, as this car is. It's a sort of sprezzatura, isn't it? The yeah, original, yeah. casual, yeah. chic yeah. style. Dedicated to yourself, and where you put your own little rules without following other yes, people's rules. Yes, absolutely. That's what, that's what this car, I think, expresses very well. Fabio Caligaris, Lancia Restorer and Historian, let's do a five-minute masterclass on the Lancia Flaminia Zagato. Right, what try. is it and where does it fit into Lancia history? Yeah, this is a Lancia Fl Flaminia Zagato and it was uh, made in three series, uh, starting in 59 with the early one with the covered uh, headlights, the second series uh, which is the most common, this one, and then the late series with the, only the, two po the Super Sport, uh, the 2.8. Uh, engine. Typical of this car is the V6 engine, disc brakes, 
and uh, all around this brakes all, all around disc brakes and uh, the transaxle so transmission at the back uh, to balance the weight so gearbox in the back engine in, in the front in the front four yes. speed gearbox four speed gearbox four wheel disc four brakes disc brakes zagato style zagato style yes typical rivals of this car in the period what could they have been well it could be a little bit higher I would say Maserati or the Alfa Romeo 2.6, which had the same capacity engine with the six-cylinder engine, although that was, in, of course, in line, not the V6. The V6. Uh, performance? Performance is around the 200 uh, kilometer per hour top speed. Would that have been fast in Italy in the 1960s? Well, uh, I, I would uh, say yes, in the early 60s, yes, so because this car was made uh, 61 to 65, so something like that. Approximately how many Flaminia Zagatos of this series do you think uh, there were? About 500 maybe. About 500? Yeah. Of all types or of just this series? Uh, no, just this series, not all types, yes. Because okay. the early cars, uh, there was another 200 probably. Okay. And the colors of this particular car, are we looking at uh, a period color scheme? Yes, this is a period of color scheme, no doubt, and uh, that was the time when Lancia had uh, named the colors with the uh, names of the horse tracks, okay. like Longchamp, uh, Newmarket, New Market, uh, uh, Tor di Valle, Cascine, mm -hmm. this is the case of the great Grigio or great Cascine. Oh, so uh, Cascine was a racetrack? Yes. Oh, uh, I didn't in, know that. Oh, uh, in Rome, Cascine and Tor di Valle. Okay. Shall we have a look inside and yeah. under the bonnet? Yeah. So V6 engines? V6 engines, very compact, put at the back, behind the, the front so axle. So everything is done here to balance the weight. To, the to gearbox at the back, the back, not at yes. the front. The engine the as engine far back at, as possible. At the back. Uh, very detailed in the Lancia style. Uh, air, the three carburetors, double barrel. Reminds me a little bit of a Ferrari 250 engine the Ferrari, in a slightly smaller yes, size. The air, the air, yes. With the air filter of, like that as well. You're missing six cylinders. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> and 500 cc. <laughs> yeah. Double circuit braking. And, and double circuit braking. Which yes. is quite advanced. That's the features, it? I would say. The, mm. In here, every, are you happy with everything? Any details that could be improved upon? We, yes, you could improve by making this zinc plated. Just okay, so the side the, of the air the filter is zinc plated zinc rather plated than and the black? Con, and these pipes, the, the rubber pipes that should go back into the filter. Okay, so the breather The breather here. should recirculate the, the oil vapor. So these breather pipes should go into the, into the filter. Idea originally, go feeding into the carburetor into box the, rather than yes. out here. Okay. With, with the black rubber pipe. Let's talk about the inside. Inside is typical Zagato with this uh, pa pads a, on the panels. I'm going to sit the in the classroom. Mm. So typical Zagato panels, you were saying? Panels with, this, with, the, with the central pocket and the two pads and right. this. Uh, the seats are not uh, the standard seats that we usually see on this car. Okay. They probably, they, the, the shape of, uh, is, um, of the, was used in the Giulietta, Alfa Romeo Giulietta SZ. Uh, the Zagato body of the uh, Zagato body right. the Giulietta, okay. the 1.3, right. a small car. Uh, so it's possible because they were made at the same period that uh, you, you could use the Giulietta seats into the Flaminia at the, the request uh, of the client, perhaps. Okay. And the instrumentation here is... It's very uh, complete. Offer, you have everything you need to control the engine yep. because you have a pressure, temperature, oil, water, uh, the it's fuel a, gauge, uh, very comprehensive, the clock, uh, the rev counter. There's everything that you need. Uh, so for very was very complete for, for that. I feel period. like I'm driving to Portofino already. <laughs> and I love this... Zagato double bubble body style. Yeah, it was a very clever idea to gain uh, space inside. You yeah. know, there were more room for the head. So give me an overall out of 100. If 100 is a Pebble Beach or Villa d'Este car and zero is a restoration project, where does this car, speaking very honestly, where does it score in your expert opinion? Well, I would say 90 because you have a few things that you could improve. Okay. Uh, so back to school for a few extra things, but yeah, generally but we pass the exam. <laughs> I would say yes, it's a nice car, it's nicely done. So it's a, it's a nice co color. So it might be Portofino I... sooner than uh, expected. <laughs> Fabio, grazie. Niente. <laughs>